thing. Some people describe MEV, minor mm -hmm. extractable value, as an existential risk to Ethereum. Mm -hmm. What is MEV? How important is it to solve MEV? If it's important, what ideas do you have? Sure. Um, how about after this one, we'll also talk about sharding because it's amazing yes. and it's part Let's of We'll return theory. back to sharding, and we'll, which is, no, and we'll I, return to the big picture of the scaling problem, as you mentioned. I love, I love this conversation, you know, depth first search instead of breadth first. <laughs> um, so uh, basically, okay, EBV, minor extractable value, um, it is not different in proof of work and proof of stake, right? So like, if you want to call it, you know, block proposer extractable value, like it sounds less sexy, but, you know, we can call it BPEV instead of MEV, who cares? Um, but the so this is a problem in both proof of work and proof of stake? Yes. So the basic idea is um, that if you have the ability to choose which transactions go into a block and in what order, then you have the ability to like take advantage of that position for economic gain in a lot more ways than just collecting transaction fees, right? Mm -hmm. Like for example, there's decentralized exchanges on chain like Uniswap. And like let's say the price of ETH to versus USDC was 2700 the previous block, but then there was a bit of a market drop and now it's 2680, where you can go on Uniswap and you can just like gobble up the entire part of um you know the automated order book that's like between 2700 and 2680 right and that's and then at the same time you like run a bot and uh, you know you buy some ETH back at 2680 and you've just like made about ten dollars of profit right so or well ten dollars times you know whatever the depth is right so and so there's lots of um little things like that there's also things um that involve like front running other people's transactions so one example of this would be that if someone sends a transaction that says like, I don't know, buy me five ETH for um, wh wh whatever price that you can get, um, then, but with a maximum of, um, let's say, yeah, uh, $15,000, then you can go and like, you can send each, put a transaction right in front of that transaction and you can like buy up that ETH first oh. and then you resell it to him at, you know, $15,000 minus one. Um, so there is, and then you get to make a little bit of money that way. Exactly. So there's a lot of these different like arbitrage, front running, back running, these different tricks that allow block proposers to... To get some percentage on top, like overhead. Exactly. Okay, um, so and the reason why this is um, a, a challenge is because... Um, it's I mean, like first of all, it's some it sometimes degrades uh, user experience because users get you know less favorable uh, trades. But there are sometimes ways to like mitigate that for applications. Sometimes it's not that bad. But like the bigger risk that I think some people consider more existential is that there's just much more economies of scale in figuring out how to extract all this revenue. I mean, because if you're just collecting transaction fees, there aren't really economies of scale. There aren't really benefits to centralizing, right? Because it's a very simple formula. You just like grab up the transactions that pay you the most. But with MEV, you know, you there's all these sophisticated algorithms. And if you have lots of money, then you can hire really smart people to make amazing algorithms. And then you can use the other half of your money to get a lot of mining power or a lot of stake. And you get a lot of opportunities to use your even better algorithms. So there's this risk that like as a result of this mining is basically or proof of, or even validating proof of stake is going to centralize um so i think the ecosystem's best reply to this sort of risk and it's the direction where projects like flashbots are going already is if you can't eliminate the centralization, then you try to firewall it, right? And the way that you firewall it is you basically say, we're going to try to deliberately create a marketplace where people can just do the complicated work of creating what are called bundles, like oh, the bundles of transactions that like are very profitable, right? And then at, at the other side of the market, you just have like block proposers or miners that are just dumb nodes. And they go and ask the, the what are called searchers, the bundle creators. And they just ask like, hey, like how much can you give me if I put in your bundle? And then they just take the highest offer, right? So you sort of separate out the task and you know you have the easy part and then you have the hard part and you have like this special class of actor called a searcher that does the hard part. And then the easy part, uh, the people doing the easy part, which is just miners and validators, they kind of, just talk to all the different people doing the searching and they just, you know, accept the highest bidder, right? So, I mean, this is also just like 
interesting uh, an interesting example of like economic design philosophy right like sometimes you can't just like make centralization go away sometimes it's inevitable but you no know, at least you can try to kind of contain it you can direct it or you know you can even sort of firewall it away from you know core consensus the parts that really do need to be decentralized so but, but you don't see it as an existential risk it's just I mean, a little uh, it, it's, it's, a, it's a bit of a problem that has to be constantly dealt with it's a, I mean, it's a risk. Like, there's obviously a, a risk that you know, there, it, it, it's a very severe problem, and that even this flashbots approach has some fatal flaw or whatever. Yeah. Um, but you know, I'm definitely like, we're definitely approaching it with the mindset of you know, this is a problem, and like, yes, we do have to do some work to solve it, but we're doing it, and uh, so far, it's being 